Hi guys, welcome to CYC. Today I want to talk to your inner critic, that voice that goes, you're not good enough, you're not strong enough, you could be doing more, all the flaws of the world lay upon your shoulders because you're currently sitting down watching a YouTube video and you could be reading something more important or you could be exercising or fixing the family or fixing the, the house, like whatever it is, you could be, you could be doing more and you don't allow yourself you know, a bit of rest time and you don't allow yourself to actually recover and you don't allow the fact that sometimes your business success comes down to luck and you don't allow the fact that sometimes your circumstance and the family you're born into, the society you're born into, all of these things will make you bad at something. It will take you longer. So our current culture, I can guarantee it takes you longer to learn the discipline, to tidy your room, to keep your car in order, to get your bills like just to have that discipline of everything sectioned out will likely take you longer than it did your parents or their grandparents because the culture now is much more laissez-faire um which is totally fair don't critique yourself over it you just you are where you are and you now know the lessons that you need to learn and you're moving towards it don't beat yourself up it's like i know the lesson why don't i like embody it yet as it's that's don't be so critical as in okay so this is why i'm saying is because we're going to try and validate we're going to try and see the value in the critic but i can't do that without saying that obviously it goes too far and you need to cut it off at certain points and you need to just be like hey look give me a break be gentle with yourself be kind to yourself but anyway that is that's that has to be held in mind while we talk about this, but it is a separate topic, um, kind of. Um, so for today, just for this one video, keeping the other part in mind that you have to be kind to yourself. Why do we have a critic? As in like, it makes us anxious. Like everyone right now, you're in the middle of a, or you're at the end of a pandemic, hopefully. And everyone has been at a standstill and everyone has that kind of just energy that's not going anywhere. That kind of just, that what I call itchiness because you're just like, I need to do something, but you haven't been able to because everything's closed down and all the rest, I get it. So on so many fronts, your social circle is not expanding. Your business is not necessarily free to explore, to experiment, to grow, to do anything really. Your education perhaps is the only thing. I think many people have fallen back onto education to give them that sense of progress because um, it's just innate to humans that we need a sense of progress, whether it's progress in the gym or it's progress in a relationship or it's progress, as we said, a uh, academically, like whatever it is, we need a sense of kind of moving forward. And we don't quite have that at the moment. So our inner critic is going 90 as in just like you know again why aren't you good enough why aren't you doing this it's like everything's your fault the reason that you're like blah, and it's just holy crap it, it can be harsh uh, and then there's other days where it's not so harsh and it's just kind of like you know you could be doing better and you're just like yeah i probably could and you either fix it or you don't or you change your behavior or you don't whichever but there's some days where it's just not that harsh but other days ha, oh, lad so that's who we're dealing with. That is, if we take that and personify it outside of ourselves, it's a very vindictive little fucker. Uh, <laughs> but it has a virtue. So talk to it and say, why are you being so critical? It's like, and, and don't please try to avoid saying because it's what other people expect of me. Um, even if that's true, even if your family do expect you to succeed, even if um, your friends expect you to be a certain type of person or like whatever it is, if, it, if you externalize it, let's um, just pause that reasoning for a moment. As I said, perhaps it's valid, but let's try and pause it just for this video. So today I want you to just say, why are you being so critical? It's you talking to yourself. Why are you being critical of yourself? And it will come down and it will inevitably, whatever answer the critic gives you, you keep asking questions, you keep probing, like, why is it this way? Why do I feel, why does that irritate me? As in like, you know, what? So the, the, the fact we want to do more, okay, why do we feel like we need to do more? Are we trying to prove, like, is it a fact that I'm trying to prove myself? It's like, no, it's because I'm really terrified because 
um, we didn't have that much money growing up or something like that. Or maybe it's that um, something physical might have happened and you might see money as a security thing. Um, or maybe it's not about money at all and it is a sense of kind of trying to prove yourself or like a low self-worth or something like that. Um, like there, there's a bunch of like holes we can kind of go down into. But we're not going to go there because we're not going to critic the critic in this video. In this video, we're actually going to kind of raise him up a little bit and just be like, Do you know what, you're doing a good job. Because... Because you have to have the discussion. You can't argue with someone on the opposite side of an opinion without giving them some kind of, do you know what, like, I get your point. You have to have some sort of understanding for their perspective. So within yourself, we're going to personify the critic outside of yourself and you're going to understand their perspective, even though it's you. I know it's weird. I know. But try it with me, okay? Just that inner critic, that voice, whatever else. Close your eyes if you need to. And just picture it outside of yourself. And to be like, what the fuck are you? It's like, who are you? Who are you to judge me? How dare you? That would be a defensive response. Um, or, you know, like, why are you so mean? That would be kind of somewhat of a naive response, I suppose. Um, if, but But actually, that might be the right response, is some bit of a naive response. Because we're not coming into this this conversation with answers we're coming in asking a question so maybe the naive response is the best response it's like why are you so mean like what is the thing it's like you could be doing more and it's like yeah you're right i could be doing more and it's like yeah but you're not doing it and you're being lazy and you're uh you're wasting your life away and like you know death is coming and it's just like death is 60 or 40 or 10 years away it doesn't <laughs> whatever it is um and I can't live my life in fear of death. Perhaps. Or else you're just kind of like, yeah, I'm actually terrified of dying because I want a legacy left behind me. I want to, I want the world to know that I was here or something like that. There's there's conversation to be had here. Um, but, okay. Which is conversation I will leave, that I won't go through in this one. But it's definitely something to meditate on and kind of explore yourself. But for, t for right now... I want you to recognize that that critic is your ideal. It is your god of some sort. Because it, because the critic is telling you that you could be more. You could be better. You could be this thing that is higher than yourself. And if you actually talk to the critic, you can figure out what that ideal is. Because the ideal is not going to be a clean picture of someone else as in it's not going to be like i want to be just like leonardo dicaprio or brad pitt or like i want to be just i don't know whoever you idealize i want to be just like them it's not going to be that that is when you're in your early teens and it's just not how your brain operates anymore your brain now gathers many different things and has now created something that doesn't yet exist it creates a version of you that is as charitable as, oh, we could say Bill Gates here just for the crack of it. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's super charitable, it's super knowledgeable, it's super um, politically correct, it's super fit, is super attractive, is uh, very charismatic. Like, whatever it is, you're going to have this amalgamation, this fucking Power Ranger Megazord thing where you have an arm of Buddhism and you have a leg of christianity and then yeah i don't know whatever else you can have this weird feckin' frankenstein monster that you've put together from just random images from different people people that you do admire that you want to be like you're going to create this and that's who's cri critiquing you that's who's giving out and saying you could be more you could be like me you could be you could have followers on instagram you could have people paying you attention you could have people listening to your mu music um, all of these things that you admire in other people. Okay, anyway, we'll pause that there for a second. But either way, so again, that's another thing I want you to explore in meditation. But that's your critic. It's actually your ideal. It's not some little demon. It's not some little devil on your shoulder. It's not some... It's not... Yeah, I think demon's the best word for it. Um, 
it's actually more godlike. It's more angelic. It's more pure. It's more, it's it's judgment. It's not poking holes and kind of getting at you. It's judgment from something that you've created, um, and you negotiating that ideal, um, or just even figuring out what it actually is. Just figuring out what, like what you're actually aiming towards or what you would like to aim towards because that's where the anxiety comes in is what what you would like to aim towards and where you're actually aiming can be very different <laughs> um so just be careful of that um but so that that's literally it that's all of it um so just be kind to yourself recognize that the critic is a bit of a dick sometimes because it doesn't take into consideration that luck plays a part, that your circumstance plays a part, that your biology plays a part. You cannot, or one person was five foot in the NBA. Like that was it. Uh, and that was 50 years ago before it was billions of euro, like mon- loads of money in it basically. Dollars, yeah, dollars. Um, <laughs> but so there's just circumstances. There's just stuff outside of your control that controls you, unfortunately. And the critic, oh, and you must be kidding me, mate. Um, so the critic, sorry about that, the critic, um, doesn't account for that. And then I'd also say when you're exploring this, explore what insecurities are, because the critic's going to go after the weak points. So just figure out which weak points it's going after and why and how, explore that territory. Um, and then lastly, just figure out what the critic is who what is your actual ideal um is it realistic is it like what is it actually um because if it's all blurry and kind of vague and stuff like that like that's you can't even hit it then and and i get it the minute you kind of actually describe and solidify your ideal um then you can fail at it which is scary um (laughs) So I get the urge not to kind of describe it, not to articulate it, not to get into the granular detail because every time you add details, you're adding conditions for failure. So uh, this process, do not think this is process is easy. This process is continuous. It is lifelong. It is, it's unavoidable, to be honest. Um, <laughs> so... Um, so I hope you're able to get through it. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping this video kind of helps you map out the terrain and then you just explore it in your own time. That's, that's my hope for this one. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there. I will see you again next Tuesday. Hit the like button, the subscribe, turn on the bell notifications all those like youtube things or whatever because it helps algorithm and all this other stuff if you wouldn't mind um and i'll see you next tuesday bye guys